Thanks for the kind introduction. It is my great honor to give this last presentation of what is one of the most exciting conferences in epigenomics. As you know, human genome sequencing has given us an enormously valuable tool to discover the genetic and molecular basis of human disease and traits. But we continue to find it extremely challenging to interpret the genome's sequence. It is likely that you got a, it's like that you got a book as a Christmas gift, but find that it was written in a language that you have not yet mastered. Let's give, uh, let's take a one example. Um, the genome-wide association study has informed us on the genetics risks of thousands of disease and trait. But the interpretation of the function of the variants, the results has been extremely hard because they are mostly located in a non-coding part of the human genome where uh, currently functional annotation is still lacking. It has been generally believed that many non-coding variants contribute to disease by perturbing the transcriptional sequences in the genome and cause misregulation of, trans of genes in specific cell types. And there are more and more examples to support this hypothesis. However, to broadly apply this theory to human traits and disease, we face major hurdles. First, the maps of the transcriptional regulatory elements in most tissues or cell types are still lacking. And second, the target genes of most uh, regulatory elements have not yet been precisely defined. And thirdly, how transcription factor binding to such regulatory elements is affected by the variants is un still uh, unknown. A solution to overcome these bottlenecks is to look at the cell's epigenome. As many speakers in this conference has already discussed, epigenome refers to the covalent modifications to DNA and the histone proteins, which are generally cell type specific and could influence transcriptional output of the genome. In our recently published work, my collaborators and I demonstrated that epigenetics marks such as histone acylation on the lysine 27 on H3 histone, uh, open chromatin state um, and uh, DNA methylation um, state can predict the activities of transcription regulatory elements in specific cell types and tissues during development. In other words, genetic elements with strong signals to such epigenetic marks can be used to identify their allocation and activities. There's one key limitation of the catalogs of candidate regulatory elements uh, previously produced for the human genome. Most of such catalogs was generated using bulk assays with heterogeneous tissues, such as shown on the left. And consequently, it is not yet possible to resolve the cell type where an element is on in that complex tissue. For example, here is a sequence variance that previously had been shown to be uh, located in a heart enhancer. The problem is heart consists of multiple cell types such as cardiomyocyte, endothelial cells, fibroblasts. Which of the such cell types is this variant uh, uh, enhancer located in? Knowing that is going to help us uh, pinpoint the mechanisms of such non-coding variants um, in its uh, role affecting uh, the cardiovascular traits. In recent years, um, single cell genomic technologies has been rapidly advancing. There are generally two approaches to this, uh, uh, to this field. 
One is using droplet-based uh, technology represented, for example, by uh, 10x genomics. Another approach, uh, which is uh, very powerful as well, is to use combinatorial uh, barcoding enabled by split and pulling strategy. And that's what we established in uh, my lab and also the Center for Epigenomics at UCSD, which I direct. In this strategy, what we start with is uh, frozen or flesh, fleshly collected tissues. We isolate nuclei and, um, and perform uh, combinatorial barcoding indexing to generate open chromatin using transposes and then um, uh, open, uh, uh, amplify them by PCR um, in a very high throughput multiplexed fashion. Uh, so in each experiment, we can profile uh, over 10,000 cells. Uh, for each cell, we uh, could get uh, on average more than 5,000 uh, open chromatin segment um, at the very low cost of less than 10 cents per cell. Uh, the main benefit of this approach in uh, interrogating open chromatin is uh, the high signal to noise that we get uh, and the very high success rate. And this is enabled by the adoption of a uh, high super uh, liquid uh, handler station. Uh, using this uh, general pipeline, we have uh, so far produced over 700, cell, uh, 700 uh, single cell taxi data sets. And uh, I'll give you a few examples of how we use this approach to interrogate cell specific regulatory landscape in human tissues and use that information to interpret non-coding variants. Let me begin with uh, human hearts. Um, we collaborated with Dr. Neil Chi at UC San Diego. Uh, my student, uh, Jake Hawker uh, and uh, Sebastian Prezo from uh, Associate Director of the Center for Epigenomics carry out such experiments. We took uh, healthy uh, hearts uh, from four donors, uh, dissect each into four chambers, and for each chamber, uh, we performed single cell attack seek. Uh, we collected a, a, a total of uh, nearly 80,000 single nuclear profiles uh, of open chromatin uh, using an in-house uh, software pipeline called Snap uh, Attack. Uh, we managed to uh, profile, uh, cluster this 80,000 nuclei into roughly uh, 10 cell types that are known to be part of the human, make up the human heart. This include atrial uh, and ventricular cardiomyocyte, one of the dominant populations, as well as uh, fibroblast, uh, smooth muscles, endothelial cells, and lymphocytes, adipocyte, and uh, uh, some nerve cells. Uh, we know what they are based upon the marker gene uh, profiles, as you see here from uh, different uh, cell types. We can clearly distinguish um, open chromatin being present on the promoters of some of the well-characterized cell-specific marker genes. With this map, now we can revisit some of the old uh, data uh, from the bulk tissues. Uh, for example, here, this uh, heart enhancer that harbor a uh, cardiovascular um, uh, trait associated with SNPs. Uh, we can show that this SNP actually is located in the enhancer active in both ventricular and atrial cardiomyocytes. And, not, uh, and this element is in, um, not active in other cell types. Uh, now we actually can now uh, have a better information about how this sequence variant may contribute to this trait. We have um, analyzed the open chromatin in each of the 10 uh, cardiomyocyte cell types that we collected. And altogether, we identified roughly 280,000 uh, candidate regulatory elements as open chromatin in uh, at least one of the cell types. And then we ask, how, does, uh, is there enrichment of uh, genetic uh, variants uh, associated with various heart disease in these cell types. So we take GWAS studies 
previously carried out uh, and perform the enrichment analysis. And we found that uh, not surprisingly, atrial fibrillation associated sequence variants are strongly enriched in uh, enhancers that we discovered in uh, cardiomyocyte, either atrial or ventricular cardiomyocyte. And the varicose vein associated uh, sequence variants are strongly associated with enhancers uh, discovered uh, in endothelial cells, again, uh, as expected. We did not find um, heart failure associated SNPs to be enriched in any of the cell types, uh, at least as a significant level. This may be due to the highly heterogeneous cause of heart failure. Um, we have um, uh, nominal enrichment for uh, coronary artery disease associated SNPs at enhancers uh, that we discovered in the, uh, uh, in the fibroblast in the heart, uh, indicating certain aspect of fibroblast in the disease pathology of coronary artery disease. With this finding, we can further ask, um, what's the mechanisms of some of those sequence variants in contributing to the trait? So let me focus on atrial fibrillation associated um, sequence variants. We took previously uh, a mapped um, GWA studies and performed the fine mapping uh, from 111 loci associated with the atrial fibrillation. We found that about 216 variants uh, have a um, uh, likely causal role in this process through the fine mapping analysis. Uh, and 38 of those overlap with cardiomyocyte uh, open chromatin element. One of them is, two of them are listed here. They are located in the intron of a potassium channel encoding gene called the KCNH2. We ask whether these two variants indeed perturb uh, the uh, in, in, potential enhancer uh, and therefore causing KCNH2 expression to be misregulated. To test this, uh, we uh, again collaborated with Neil Chi, uh, whose lab has established a in vitro uh, IP, uh, human ESL differentiation system where uh, embryonic stem cells can be um, uh, robustly differentiated into cardiomyocyte in vitro that allow us to test the functional regulation of this element. Um, so we first perform uh, luciferous porter assays taking the element uh, and construct it, in, uh, stick it, uh, stitch it to a reporter gene, luciferous reporter, and, uh, um, and the transfect into the cardiomyocyte uh, and ask whether luciferous gene expression is uh, turned on by this element. Uh, so uh, the reference allele here uh, show very robust uh, reporter activities uh, in this assay in the cardiomyocyte. Uh, the risk allele, uh, in which case the A is switched to a G on that uh, enhancer element, uh, show uh, very much reduced um, in enhancer activity in this reporter assay. Uh, so suggesting that this risk allele indeed could affect uh, the uh, enhancer activity, at least in this reporter assay. We next uh, perform an uh, enhancer knockout experiment uh, in this case, um, we use CRISPR uh, to remove the enhancer from its endogenous locus uh, from both alleles. And uh, again, perform the differentiation of the human embryonic stem cells to a uh, cardiomyocyte and ask whether KCH, uh, KCNH2 gene is uh, affected by the enhanced deletion. As expected, uh, removal of uh, both alleles uh, of the enhancer resulted in a significant over 70% reduction of KCNH, uh, KCNH2 in two independently uh, derived clones. Uh, if you uh, even in, uh, reduce one of the enhancers from two alleles, uh, you also see a quantitative reduction of uh, KCNH2 gene expression. As a control at Titan II, a uh, cardiomyocyte uh, ex uh, specifically expressed genes is not affected by this enhancer. 
uh, deletion. Um, so, um, so this experiment support our notion that the enhancer that we identified for KCH, KCNH2 is indeed controlling uh, its activity and the, the risk variance uh, likely results in reduction of KCNH2 expression in uh, patients with that allele. Finally, we ask whether this uh, variants could have physiological phenotype. And to test that, we perform patch clamping uh, to look at the depolarization of, uh, of this uh, caliomyocytes. Um, and uh, as uh, you can see from this uh, patch clamp curve, normal cells, you have a, a very short uh, depolarization uh, uh, and recovery load, uh, curve. But uh, without KCHN2, um, uh, expression or reduce uh, without the enhancer for KCHN2, this um, depolarization curve is elongated. It takes much longer time than uh, norm normal wild type cells to, um, uh, to recover. This strongly suggests a physiological phenotype uh, that could be result in uh, having this risk variance. So our study therefore uh, showed how we can use single cell um, quantum accessibility assays to pinpoint uh, not only the cell type where sequence variants uh, could be active uh, and affect the biology, but also the genes and the regulatory elements in which that, uh, in that particular cell type uh, where um, these variants could affect uh, transcription and, uh, and, uh, and cause phenotypes. <coughs> And we have uh, now collected data from uh, many different tissues using the same strategy. Uh, this is one example we recently released in BioArchive where we applied single cell uh, chromatin accessibility assays to the mouse cerebrum as part of the uh, Brain Initiative project um, in the US. Uh, in this case, we collaborated with Marga Barron and Joe Ecker from Salk. Uh, Margar um, <clears throat> isolated 45 brain regions uh, that make up the, uh, the cerebrum, the largest brain areas uh, in, in the mouse. Uh, this includes uh, olfactory uh, lobe, the new cortex, uh, the hippocampus, and also uh, subcortical nuclei, uh, such as pallidum and striatum. And we perform a single cell attack on um, each of these brain regions. Uh, all together, we generated uh, more than 800,000 uh, single nuclear profiles uh, from all 45 regions combined, each analyzed in duplicate. This uh, led uh, through using clustering analysis, we identified 43 uh, major brain cell types and uh, uh, 160 subtypes. Uh, this uh, include uh, 21 um, subtypes of non-neuronal cells, including microglia, oligodendrocytes, and um, 71 GABAergic neurons. These are uh, inhibitory neurons that um, uh, make up the, uh, a significant part of the uh, brain, uh, brain cir neuron circuits. And then there are 76 subtypes of glutamatergic neurons. Uh, again, these are excitatory neurons that uh, allow uh, neural circuits uh, to function. We managed to identify uh, 490,000 candidate regulatory elements by uh, identifying peaks from each of the cell types. As you can see from this heat map, uh, the vast majority of these elements are uh, open chromatin state in a cell type specific manner, uh, indicating that they may be uh, involved in uh, cell type specific gene regulation. Uh, this 491,000 elements makes up roughly 14% uh, of the mouse genome. And we ask whether, we, uh, whether they have a sequence conservation in the human and we found that nearly 70% of them have at least 50% homology uh, in a, to a human sequence. So we uh, then use this information to uh, perform 
uh, enrichment analysis, uh, trying to identify um, association between uh, various uh, neurological uh, traits uh, with uh, cell type specific regulatory elements, assuming that the conserved um, mouse uh, regulatory elements uh, are likely also functional in the counter uh, part of the human genome. And indeed, we found a very strong association for many such neurological traits. For example, schizophrenia uh, associated regulatory uh, uh, variants are uh, strongly associated with um, enhancer, candidate enhancers that we discovered in excitatory neurons and inhibitory neurons. Uh, similarly, uh, bipolar disorder associated sequence variants are strongly associated with several um, inhibitory neuron cell types, as well as uh, excitatory neuronal cell types. I don't show here, but uh, these neurological traits also have specific association with certain brain regions. We also carry out similar studies for human tissues. And uh, in this case, uh, we in interrogated 25 human tissues uh, using single cell taxi profile and uh, identified roughly um, uh, single nuclear profiles from uh, nearly half a million cells. Uh, these are grouped into 54 different cell clusters and uh, resulted in the identification of 756,000 candidate regulatory elements. As you can see, uh, the uh, vast majority of these elements are showing strong uh, enrichment uh, or activity in individual cell types. So this would be uh, indeed uh, the first such uh, broad survey of regulatory elements in a cell type specific manner in the human genome. And we use the resulting maps uh, to interrogate association between uh, human disease and traits uh, and cell type specific regulatory elements. And as you can see here, uh, many of the um, uh, autoimmune disease are associated with uh, regulatory elements discovered in the B or T lymphocytes. Uh, here, um, the um, uh, many uh, uh, the other traits are, or disease, such as uh, uh, a couple of Turner canal syndromes or coronary artery disease, somehow has strong enrichment uh, or association with uh, uh, smooth muscles or fibroblasts. And uh, down here, uh, there are uh, traits such as serine uh, urea levels, uh, and uh, these are associated with, uh, 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 with some specific cell types uh, that we discovered. <clears throat> There's uh, one example I want to highlight. Uh, in this case, uh, there's uh, authors uh, um, a variant that has been uh, associated um, uh, that was associated with uh, identified here in this genomic region, um, and uh, we discovered that this variant uh, is a, uh, strongly enriched in a um, several cell types from uh, from the colon, um, and this. Um, is far away from a gene uh, known as uh, IRF8. Um, by um, co-accessibility analysis, we predict that this element might be associated with the expression of IRF8 uh, that help us pinpoint that this element, this um, uh, ulcer's uh, colitis uh, var associated variants uh, might be a fact uh, might be involved in uh, transcription regulation of IRF8 through uh, perturbing this, uh, uh, col uh, this cell type specific uh, enhancers in the colon. So uh, now we have uh, managed to uh, create uh, genome wide maps of regulatory element in, um, uh, in, in the human and the mouse genomes. Uh, the major barrier Next is uh, to link such element to, uh, to their putative target genes. And to address this, uh, there have been multiple approaches. Uh, one, I think, very exciting <coughs> approach that was developed 
by uh, Ed Mander and uh, JC, uh, Jesse Ingrid's lab uh, was uh, a ag activity by contact model. Uh, in this case, uh, you can use uh, histone modification uh, profiles uh, corresponding to histone H3 lysine 27 acylation and um, uh, 3D quantum conf confirmation assay using uh, high C data to um, effectively uh, predict the cons uh, effect of uh, an enhancer to target gene expression. To apply this model to the single cell data sets face the challenge that we don't really have a single cell level data for histone modification or 3D genome confirmations. Uh, we now have tools to address these two uh, challenges. Uh, Chen Shu Zhu in my lab, uh, postdoctoral fellow in my lab have developed a tool called Paired Tag uh, that allow high super joint analysis of histone marks and transcription in single cells. Uh, this assay as shown here uh, combines uh, cut and tag developed by Steve Hanekop lab uh, for histone modification mapping with paired seq, a, a method that Chen Shui developed and published um, recently also uh, that combine, uh, that combine uh, single cell attack and single cell RNA analysis together. Uh, so uh, briefly, uh, this assay start with antibody staining using um, antibody against specific histone marks. Uh, and then we uh, uh, add uh, protein A fields to TN5 transposes uh, to generate uh, a location specific uh, barcodes. Uh, and that um, in the, uh, is followed by reverse transcriptase using again, a cell specific bar, uh, using barcodes to, uh, to add uh, DNA to the uh, cDNA. <coughs> uh, so to generate cell specific barcodes, we then perform ligation using uh, barcodes in a pull and split fashion. Uh, so through multiple round of uh, pull and splitting, we can generate tens of thousand of com unique combinations of uh, barcodes. And that allows us to individually interrogate uh, open chromatin uh, generated by this uh, cut and tag technology and uh, uh, RNA transcriptome generated by this reverse transcription. <clears throat> so this strategy is applied to two brain regions in the mouse, <clears throat> frontal cortex and hippocampus. And we interrogated five histone marks, including lysine for monomethylation, <clears throat> lysine for trimethylation, lysine 27 acylation, lysine 27 trimethylation and the K9 methylation. And uh, we can now, uh, after uh, sequencing 65,000 nuclei, uh, we can separate them into uh, 22 different uh, cell clusters that correspond to non-neuron <coughs> and neuron uh, and, and uh, excitatory neuron and uh, inhibiting neuron clusters. And uh, for each of the cell clusters, we can identify cell specific transcriptome and producing for the first time cell-specific uh, histone marks for, for these brain cell types. And the cell clustering that we generate using <coughs> uh, RNA-seq match very well with um, uh, single modality uh, 10x uh, SNRNA-seq data as showing this uh, uh, comparison frontal cortex and hippocampus, there is a very strong one-to-one -one agreement of the cell types that we clustered using pair tech RNA component and 10X single cell RNA. And uh, the correlation coefficient uh, of variable genes is uh, strong and very high compared to uh, non-matched cells. And to highlight how uh, these maps can be useful for us to understand the chromatin state, I show you how um, uh, a heat map of uh, the um, gene promoters uh, across uh, the cell types for each of the five histone marks. And you can see that in general, there are three classes of promoters. The first one is heterochromatin marked promoter showing strong enrichment of lysine I trimethylation. 
The second class is uh, also silenced promoters, but they are occupied by lysine 27 trimethylation. And the third class are promoters that are generally associated with his active histone marks, such as lysine 4 tri, lysine 4 monomethylation, and lysine 27 acylation in a cell type specific manner. We use Crompton HMM to uh, delineate different combinations of Crompton state and generate cell type specific Crompton state maps as you can see for, uh, for these five marker chains. We also can uh, interrogate Crompton confirmation using a combined uh, single cell uh, multiomic analysis uh, to jointly analyze DNA methylation and the histone modification. And this method uh, was developed independently in my lab and we call it single cell methyl high C and also in my collaborator, Joe Ecker's lab, uh, which they call uh, single nucleus M3C sick. So the general strategy is you perform uh, cross-linking and uh, in situ proximity ligation in an assay called in situ 3C. Then you sort the nuclei into individual wells uh, and then perform by sulfide conversion and, uh, and the seek whole genome sequencing. In this, using this strategy, Joe Ecker's lab previously have uh, profiled 4,000 single uh, cells from the human prefrontal cortex. And uh, using DNA methylation profiles, uh, they were able to uh, identify uh, the uh, roughly 20 different constituent cell types in the, in the prefrontal cortex. And you can basically see for each cell clusters by combining the 3C confirmation data, you can see Crompton loops and Crompton domains, as we generally see using bulk uh, high C data. My collaborator Ming Hu from Cleveland Clinics identified loops using a new method that we jointly developed called SNAP high C, and we can detect tens of thousands of Crompton loops from each of the cell types from as few as 100 cells, as you can see. And these loops allow us to link distal uh, non-coding variants to their putative target genes. Uh, for example, here it's an APOE, a risk locus associated with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and APOE is a strongly expressed in astrocyte. And several uh, distal elements uh, harbor um, APOE variants is now, uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease associated variants is now linked to APOE expression. In summary, we now have tools to overcome uh, some of the major challenges of uh, interpreting uh, non-coding variants in the human genome. In particular, uh, pair tag and single cell methyl high C uh, allow us to uh, uh, interrogate the Crompton state of each element in individual cell types and uh, link them to their positive target genes. Where do we go from here? Uh, clearly, uh, our job is not done to, um, uh, to generate cell type specific uh, regulatory maps uh, in the human genome. Uh, the exciting news is that there has been so many new tools uh, that allow us to produce both uh, cell type specific and spatially resolve the maps of, uh, of such element. So we uh, are looking forward to have uh, such information in the near future. Again, the tools that I described today will allow us to generate better models uh, on, uh, to predict target genes of uh, regulatory elements in each cell types and then predict their effects. And finally, um, we and others are making progress to uh, better predict binding of transcription factors uh, to sequence variants. So I think uh, in the next few years, we're going to see a lot of a very exciting development in this field. To conclude, I uh, like to thank my uh, colleagues. Uh, I mentioned their name in uh, the process um, and uh, they, their names are listed here. I also would like to thank the funding agencies for supporting our research uh, from uh, this you know, our NIH Ludwig Cancer Institute, uh, in particular, the BRIN initiative uh, and uh, the um, uh, and ENCODE and 4D Nucleum has uh, support our research over the years. Uh, I'd like to uh, stop here and take questions.
Thank you very much for your attention.